Oh, yeah. My dad, by the way, is like one of your biggest fans. Oh, I know. Yeah, he, I, I love he'll Pops. Call, he'll call me. Like, ask me his normal questions. Like, how you doing? And I swear, like, majority of the time, there's a, how's Kendall doing? Is he healthy? <laughs> like, yes, sir. He's doing good. Man, I love Pops. After the games, it's always, you know, when they let the parents come down to the field, we go to the locker room and change and come back out. When I come out the locker room, he's always one of the first ones there. If I don't see my parents first, I'm going to see Papa uh, Radledge right there. And he's always he, – he, he lets me know he loves me. And I say, love you too, Pop. And, you know, that's basically – this situation turned a lot of situations into family. You know, family situations where check in on each other, make sure each other's good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, love, love Papa Radledge. And that coach of an Athens got the boys playing pretty good. All right, K Milt, appreciate you being on, brother. Uh, what you wearing? What are these? Uh, Chanel pants, man. Chanel? Yeah, bro. A little drippy. He was like, What do I need to wear? I was like, Whatever you want, big fella. Yeah, I, I know if y'all boys want me to pull up in a polo. It's all right. Tate wears these shorts every single episode. <laughs> so. The exact shorts? Exact shorts. Not the, these exact shorts. No, you wear those every time. They're always Lulu. They just must be my rotation or something. All right, K Milt, Cali's finest. Had you, you from Fresno? Yeah, Fresno. Where's, where's that at in Cali? Central Valley, middle of the state. Okay. Middle of the state. What was it like? We'll get to that in a second, actually. But Cali, Georgia. Why Georgia? I mean, for me, I would say it was just like everything, just in terms of like feeling comfortable and then like actually going somewhere where like the education meant something. And then just the football aspect, the coaches and everything, all that kind of. All that, and then on my visit, it was kind of one of those just like hit home moments, you know, like, you know, like you feel, you feel it, like when you're on your visit, like every visit, you mm -hmm. feel a different way. On the Georgia visit, it was one of those like put the uniform on in the locker room, and I, that was when I committed. Like that day, it was before, it was probably three months before I had came out public. I had committed to McGee, and I just left it right there. But it was really just, you know, school, football, like the atmosphere, just like Athens. Um, and then also like being able to set myself up for after college, like just the being able to market myself and you know develop relationships and you know I want to get into car dealerships. So like Atlanta is like a perfect market, especially you know you build something up there. So it was like a whole lot of factors. Heck yeah. What's the what's the biggest difference between going from California high school ball to big time SEC? I mean. What up, y'all? I want to quickly interrupt this episode with three announcements. Number one, hit us up on all socials and subscribe to the YouTube channel for the boys. We need you. We love you. Uh, we love the support. Just go hit us up real quick at Real Talk WRT for at Real Talk with Rylan and Tate. Number two, we got merch rolling. Link is in the bio. Go buy yourself some merch, show some support. And speaking of merch, last episode we had Nakobe Dean on and he was kind enough to sign a georgia helmet for us we're doing a giveaway all you got to do it's real simple follow the instagram tag three friends that'll get you an entry into winning the national champion and super bowl attendee signee helmet from nicobe dean do it again follow us on socials hit us up subscribe buy a piece of merch and enter the contest to win back to it I mean, it's really just a difference. I would say just a culture. Like, and that was the reason why I didn't want to stay in California was just because, like, even though some schools had, like, culture and, you know, they had their traditions, it wasn't the same as if you go to, like, Georgia or even, like, Alabama or LSU. Just the culture of football, the, the involvement of the fans, the, you know, it's just like, you know, you see it when you turn on, you know, every week when you turn on, whatchamacallit, the, uh, what's it, college game day? Mm -hmm. It's always like an SEC school or something, you know what I mean? It's yeah. always... You know, the big football is always on this side. It's not really on that side. So even when, you know, when you growing up watching the big games, it was always like Alabama and Auburn and, you know, those schools. Because I was back when, like, Trey Mason was at Auburn and stuff. That's what I was growing up watching. So That's a dude whose story is insane. Trey mm -hmm. Mason. Mm -hmm. what, what what happened with him again? He, he was in the league for, like, a year or two years or something. Then he, like, something happened, wasn't it? Was it CTE or it was so. something? Like, it was something bad. Like, yeah. he had to. Cause he he, he, hard he almost won the he almost won the Heisman. Yeah, that boy was at hard. Auburn. I remember watching him. That mm -hmm. was that big game, but uh, them in Bama. Yeah, bro. But Trey Mason was going. What stupid. year was that? Fifth, yeah, 14, 13, 12 ish yeah. area. It was it was around that time. I think it, it was during BCS time. I'm pretty yeah. sure. 
Who do you model your game after? Obviously, you're a big running back, physical. Yeah. Model my game after? I would say it's a it's like a mix. Like in some in some aspects, there's like Leonard Fournette, you know, just with the size and like just the movement. But same way, like I'll catch myself certain times being like super patient. And, you know, certain games of like Le'Veon Bell, you know, during when he was in uh, stutter in the backfield, waiting, yeah. wait, wait, and go. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of a combination of different of different people because I was one of those growing up like always watching YouTube videos, always mm -hmm. watching highlights, like Tavon Austin, D'Anthony Thomas, uh, Le'Veon Bell at Michigan State. You know, I was always watching, even LaDainian Thompson when he was with the Chargers, like I would go back and watch those all the time. So it was like, you know, when you watch videos enough, you try to mimic movements and stuff like that. So it's really a combination of people. Bro, speaking of Tavon Austin, in high school, my sophomore year, we had Tavon Austin's cousin on our team. He came, he transferred in from out of state. Mm -hmm. Just as a little kid, but looked shifty. We were like, this kid's going to be unbelievable. Yeah. He showed the first day, like, got Tavon on FaceTime. So we're all like, wow, like, this kid's going to be the greatest kid on the face of the earth. Couldn't ass. play a lick of football, bro. And I, and I got hate for saying Tavon Austin was one of the greatest college football players ever. You got hate for it? He's got the greatest college football highlight of That's all time. That's what I'm saying. But I feel like if you got the greatest highlight, you should work your way into conversation. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, who gave you hate for that? Yeah. Didn't we – we put that out, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we, people hated on that? Yeah. Really? I mean, Wasn't it I mean, you that said he shouldn't have been in there? No. It is Val. I mean, it probably was another thing because half of your takes a, are the worst takes on the face of the earth. There's but. not a football player growing up in our age that did not watch his highlights. Oh, God. I mean, I was an offensive lineman from day one, and I still watched his highlights. No, 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 you weren't. You were yeah, a was, former I tight was, end. No, we had weight limits. You were a former tight end. Yeah, that was Your 247 I, account says Tate Routledge, former tight end. It was end. like my eighth grade year. Former tight end. Yeah, back when I was soft. <laughs> You're still soft. Like a pillow. Katarly says a tri dealt pillow fight. That's exactly what you're like. <laughs> Sounds like our tight ends every day blocking. That's uh, just not true. Our why our why tight end is about to go in the first round. Right now. Not when he was here. Right now. I'm not there, so you can say whatever you want. Mississippi State's tight ends are some dogs. That's all I'm gonna say. We some dudes. We got two two natty, natty game attendees in that room. Who? Sp Spivey and me. Spivey was TC at TCU. Oh, 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 I knew you, but that didn't turn out too well for him. Yeah, I gave him. I, I saw him uh, this past weekend. Went to Starkville, saw him. I gave him a little bit of crap for it, but dude, he's huge. He's a big dude. He's a really big dude. All right, so K Milk. Yep. We kick off our our segment or our show. We're also looking for a sponsor. So if you want to sponsor the segment of the show, let us know. <laughs> Fist pump feature of the week. Oh, Tiger Woods. Think about it. Sinks a putt. He's known for the nice little fist pump. Mm -hmm. Go crazy. Think about something this week that was fist pump worthy that gave you get, got you fired up a little bit. All right, fist pump worthy. I'll go first. Give you time to think. Right. Give you some time to think. Uh, went to Starkville this weekend. Uh, on an unofficial, get to hang out with the guys, watch them practice, do the whole nine. Got me su super stoked to get there, so yeah. it, was, it was fun to be there. Tate? Turkey season starts on Saturday. Turkey season? Boom. All right, let me think. Man. Turkey season. Right. Something dope that happened this week. Something dope. I got time to think, all right? You got a couple seconds? Yeah, whenever you want. This is usually me. I say for yeah, like Tate takes forever. Right? So Tate takes forever. Say, yeah. so Tate, I think just, Tate has less and less brain cells every episode we do. So it's probably because I head. Yeah, it's probably because I headbutt more and more people every yeah, day. Every day. It is Monday though, so you have you have a little rest on, yeah, on your shoulders yeah. and you you're functioning a little better. I mean, I had a what two day break, like thirty six hours off. Well. Tate does look more well rested. You this do, week, no doubt. You do he's look a little, a little, he's a little more alive. We usually, usually film is. on Thursday, so on Thursdays he's like, <laughs> after practice. Th too. This happened. This happened. I just, I don't know. <laughs> that's that's who how wants, I guess. I'm to think, who wants basketball? I've been watching a lot of basketball lately. March Madness. The FAU, the FAU team's yeah, crazy. This is the my, craziest my Final Four. Cooked, though. I won. So Lad invited me to be a part of his family, his family pool, and. uh I want it. <laughs> so his family's probably like, who the heck is this kid? Oh, but you I want, want the whole it. thing? Yeah, I want his family one. <laughs> trying to think. Whether it be like you had a dope meal somewhere or you like 
went to the A for the weekend or something. I did have me a crazy steak in the A. Where a little at? Alley. Is it good? A little alley steak. I heard house. about it. I had me. It was like a wagyu steak with the with the truffle butter on top. Yeah, that's my that's my you, right there. Where'd you go after dinner? Went to the club, man. Yeah, <laughs> you do. It was after the signing too. Yeah, you had to go. Nice. Yeah. And Kenny was in town. <laughs> mm. That's double trouble. What are they saying about Kenny Mack in the draft? I mean, he messed up with like his forty and stuff. Cause like, I think his best forty was like a four seven or something. But just in terms of like the testing and stuff, he did real good with like the like the interviews and the testing mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But the only thing that's gonna be like questioning is just like they gonna talk about just the numbers really and like. Mm-hmm. They gonna be like, what was the preparation? I feel like for the, like for the combine, because you look on film, like he's not no four seven speed. You know, I was gonna say if he runs four seven, I'm running five seven. <laughs> like in that heat, no. Like, that's what it, he was. He was out there in the Miami training, so you know how that go. I don't need to go Dude, to Miami. All they gotta do is turn on the Cincinnati game from 2020. That kid won us the Cincinnati Bats. game, him Bats. and Pod with the kick. But turn that game winning drive, dude, it was like. Kenny Mack. That boy Kenny, Kenny Mack. was tired. Kenny I Mack. know he was tired. Turn on him bro. He was getting the ball every play. Bro. <laughs> he was just a playmaker. Stud. Oh, my uh, so my parents uh what was your yeah, the steak, right? Yeah. Okay, the steak. Um so my parents hopped on a plane to go to Florida somewhere and uh they sat next to I think it was Kenny's uncle. Or something, and they talked the whole time about it. Mm-hmm. But it was an, they said he was an awesome dude, and yeah. I was like, "That's how his family is, bro. His, his people, people are good people." Yeah, they all good people. They all, you know what I mean, it's all good vibes with them boys. All right, so let's think about this. In the last five years, Kenny Mack, who will go drafted, James Cook, um, Swift. Uh, you talking about just drafted? I'm just talking about just the last couple of years. Samir. Chubb, Samir, that's Sonny what I was Michelle. thinking about. Chubb, Sony, Michelle, Gurley, K. Milt, Branson, mm-hmm. like. No Sean Marino. Uh, Ger- um, no Marino uh, crazy Keith Marshall. Keith Marshall. I, that's what I was thinking of. I was thinking of. So. I can't think of his name. Would you R- say we're RBU? Yeah, for you the most part. So. I feel like. Most part. Now I, no, I just feel like it's like we'll we'll never be the the backfield to like have everybody with like stupid stats just because of what we rotate. Yeah. But it's like all the all the like the production like speaks for itself like. Yeah. When we rotate, like it's still like never no drop off. It's still literally no drop know, off. Still killing the uh, rushing yards per uh, carry, everything like that. And there's other schools that get in discussions where they be having backs that be getting the ball like 30 times a game, 32 carries a mm-hmm. game. So it's like way. Would easier. you like that? No, nah, hell no. That's what dude. That's <laughs> the crazy part is like standing by the offensive. Like when we stand on the sideline during the game, and. Like every like player two, it's you on, you off, Kenny on, Kenny off, mm-hmm. Branson on, Branson off, Dejon on, Dejon off, and like the, it's just like nothing changes. Like yep. it's just this, it's steady, it's the same every time. I'd like never know who's in when we're in a game, <laughs> and one of y'all, it's like it would either be Kenny Kendall or Dejon last year. Break a run, you're like, oh shit, there goes Kendall, there goes Kenny, <laughs> there goes Dejon through that little hole. We what, really what, what, Florida, Florida, what game? That was Florida. Florida yeah. The hole was yeah. guys. The hole, the hole was this big. And oh Dejon sees it and just whoop, gone touchdown. Dude, it was yeah, insane. I had, to, I had to pin that 420 pound <laughs> yeah. nose tackle. I remember that. The, the that dude was, was huge. Like, I was like this. That ended preparation. Up getting, like, I remember that. Tripping over somebody, like laying on my back, didn't know what was happening. And then Dev ended up coming up, picking me up. Big I was Dev. like, it just happened. Big Dev, dude. Um, Kendall, what's what's your favorite run of your career? Oh, Mike, oh. sorry. Are we on? Yeah, we've been on the whole time. Oh, tripping. But <laughs> favorite run of my career, I would say, thinking back hard to it, the first one that was my favorite was Tennessee my freshman year, which I, like, mm-hmm. it was like a play. I brought like six yep. tackles, something like that. Um, that's definitely the first one. Um, second one, the LSU one was dope this year when I had that you know, broke, broke through the line and seen it. I wish I would have finished it, but Major put his head down. He was striking. I got but, him back for that. Yeah, Tate, Tate got him back for you. <laughs> you, got him. you don't remember then, getting that personal? <laughs> uh-uh. What happened? You don't remember the flag? Uh-uh. Thanks, Tate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it was you that got tackled, actually. Yeah. And he was, like, near you. 
And for some reason, like during it was the game, that play. Yeah, I thought there was a pile. No, I don't think it was that play. Because he wasn't. He was wasn't it the play when it was like later on, and he tried to chop me, and I stayed up. No, he didn't get to you. But I thought there was like a pile for some reason. Yeah. There wasn't a pile, and he, he was like three major. yards away, and I cleaned him from right, like from behind. Yeah, and got a personal. But yeah, no. But to be honest, it's it's not even like there's just one. It's just. To be honest, like sitting here right now, you forget about like so many yeah. like other runs because when you playing in the game, it's really just living in the moment. Like, you know, like people ask me when you break a run, like what does it feel like with the crowd? And, and it's like I don't even hear the crowd. Yeah. I don't even see people jumping around. Like everything doesn't really set in and hit until after like when you when you're watching the highlights yeah. after the game and you hear it. Like I remember now that I think about it, my favorite one was Ohio State because I remember I. I ran the ball outside, broke a tackle in the backfield, lowered my shoulder to get it in, but I didn't really know if I got it in or not. And when I got tackled, I looked at the ref, and I'm just staring at the ref. Like, it's like a split second, like three seconds. And I get up, and I'm just staring at him. He put the arms up, and then I remember the lights went dim, and that was – That's I'm lit. Not lie, the bends. That's or, lit. Yeah, that yeah. was just different. Like That place, like the, the horn just and the lights. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. That, the two that, I remember from you were the LSU game and the Georgia Tech game. Uh, when you, Tech. Oh, yeah, you it was, it was Rhino. I don't even think you got touched. Mm. <laughs> Just straight yeah. through. It's crazy because, like, that's really not supposed to hit there. Like, in terms of a run read and everything, it's not supposed to hit there. But uh, They ran some kind of stunt, and you hitting that hole right there made us look really good. Untouched. <laughs> really untouched. good. Yeah, and, and even I, remember, split it. I don't remember who the receiver was, but they came, and when they came at the safety, because, you know, the safety came down to fill uh -huh. the box, they came to crack the safety. And the safety, like, almost felt his presence. So, when I got through the hole, the safety was looking on the, at, the, at his side eye. Wasn't even looking trying at to you. See, that's why I just went straight through. And, that was yeah, a that was electric. a beautiful picture. I'm not going to lie. That was a beautiful That's got to feel good. What was your – those are some of your favorite plays. What was your welcome to Georgia, welcome to SEC football moment? So, I would say the first – like, I'm going to answer it in two, in two answers. The first welcome to Georgia moment, my freshman year versus Auburn, we are, it's COVID year, so it's like the stand's not all the way full, but it's still pretty loud. Um, Stetson in the game, you know, it's the, this is back then, you know, Stetson in the game, it's, we at the end of the game, and it's probably on the 30-yard line. I got, I got the ball, I don't even know, it was just an inside zone run, I probably got four yards, and I got tackled and I got up, and I remember, like, right when they said on the, the um, on like the announcer, he was like Kendall Milton with the gain of 20 yards, and the crowd like started cheering off of that. And I remember Stetson was like, "Oh, look at him! People love you." So that was probably just the welcome to Georgia moment because it was just like I said before, just the atmosphere and everything. That was just a dope moment. But welcome to SEC football. I would say I'm gonna skip over COVID year because that was like that was football, but it wasn't yeah. you know, the same. Uh, moving on to my sophomore year, I would say really. Probably the Arkansas game because you know that was a noon game. Mm -hmm. like, that was crazy. Kirby had told you know told Dog Nation like we need you all to come out. It's a noon game. We need the energy. And like right when we walked into the arena or walked in the stadium, like packed. Like come out come out the uh, locker room. It was yeah, packed. At noon. And it wasn't like it was just like packed and just like normal or anything. It was like loud and rocking. Like they were on offense first, I think. And First two, three plays, three false yeah, starts, false in, a starts just no. in a row. And I'm watching, like, you know, and that's not something that just happens. So, like, seeing that, I was like, okay, like, SEC football, like, yeah, it's definitely different. Because I know it was hard for me to wake up, you know, be there for the noon game and, you know, get myself in, the, in, that, in that mindset. But seeing everybody, you know, we run out, out the tunnel at probably 11.50, we run out the tunnel, and you just look. Because it's different when you – do the warm ups and everything, and it then was, you go was, in. Because when you go in, when wild. you go out after, it's just when you look in the stands and you don't see not one seat open. That it's game was kind of packed during warm ups. Because mm -hmm. I remember I was out there like before, because I, I never really went locker room. Once yeah. I was out there, I stayed out there because I was on that scooter. But I was like, it is 11 o'clock and our student section's full. Packed. Because they like have an that hour little before kickoff. They have that little um, the student section, not the one behind the end zone, but the one uh -huh. that's like on the side of the stands. Yeah, that one's always like super packed. Yeah, like dude, way man. before, like by the time we walking in with the suits, with our suits on and stuff, people are already in the in the in the uh, stands. So, what's been your? Obviously, that was a crazy experience. What, what's been your favorite game to just be a part of? Favorite game to be a part of. Um, 
to be honest, I would say Alabama, you know, the national championship. That was a great game to be a part of. LSU, um, this year the SEC championship, that was a great game to be a part of. Um, and then just TCU again because, you know, that was back in California. So How was that? That was different Being home. just for the fact that that was the most, you know, tickets that I had to sign at any game because I had, you know, family just able to drive up instead of flying five hours across the country. They're able to drive three and a half hours, you know, two hours. Some people live within 45 minutes. So, you know, just the feeling of being able to have, you know, my people be able to watch me like kind of not in the backyard because, you know, I'm from Fresno, but just in the same state. That, that, that made it, you know, a whole lot better. How far of a drive is that? About three and a half hours. So that's wow. like that, that's how my parents like my parents are two and a half hours away yeah. depending on Atlanta, so like they drive to every game. Exactly. Like, but that was great for them. Yeah. So my dad like always tells me he's like, I don't know like what we'd do like if you went to school exactly like where we'd have to take a flight every yeah. weekend because mm-hmm. he coaches and stuff like exactly your family's got jobs it's not like exactly. they can just it's, yeah that's why you know reaching this point you know especially as you get older you definitely like start to get a sense and appreciate the things that you know your folks do because you know everybody has their own life to live everybody has work everybody has their job but you know when they make that extra time you know, that dude just, that just like, means the that's most. that's been the biggest thing for me growing up is realizing like stuff like that is so precious mm-hmm. like i got to have dinner with alexa and my parents on sunday driving back from starkville at like magianos and like mm-hmm. i hadn't seen them in two weeks and exactly. so it was good to like just, just yeah, go to hang sit out down with them. And, yeah. yeah and that's one thing that i would say like when you're younger and everything and you're doing uh aau basketball and travel football and you know baseball or whatever you don't really see you know everything that goes down but Mm -hmm. I feel like me personally as I get older and there's certain there's certain things that you don't want to do but like you have to do it you know what I mean I feel like that was basically what they did like they didn't want to do it all the Mm -hmm. time but it was for somebody else so you know it just means the most Saturday at that coach's clinic my dad got to come up and watch practice Mm -hmm. and he was my coach in high school yeah he coached our D-line and offensive line it was just like it was like I just like looked at him sitting over there I was like damn I missed that yeah like that but your dad, um, like, played a huge role for you growing up. What was that like having a dad that was just mm-hmm. I mean, super, super cool? And, and Yeah, it really, I would say it kind of, it really built me into, you know, the not only the athlete, but the person I am today. Like, I remember I would be in fourth grade. My dad, he was the uh, strength and conditioning coach at the high school. Speaking of, was, your dad's huge. Oh, yeah, definitely. Big swole. <laughs> swole. Yes. But he was a strength and conditioning coach, so, you know, he was in charge of the 6 a.m. workouts and, you know, the team's workouts, and I was that kid in fourth grade, fourth, fifth grade, waking up at 5.30, going out to run with the high school team or, me. you know, just yep. stuff like that. Just I was always – one thing he, he put me in the position to, to do was always be with, like, older people. Like, mm-hmm. I was never just hanging around uh, my grade. My brother, he's five years older than me, and he always been in sports and everything like that. So even when I train or whatever, I was, I've always been around older people. So getting that sense, and it gave me a different type of, like, hunger for competition because, you know, you're going against older, so you know you're going to have to push that extra mile to, you know, meet that standard. And just having a dad that was kind of supportive of whatever I did, like I did wrestling, baseball, football, basketball, and there was never really like, yeah, there was never really a push to be like, okay, you got to do this, you got to do that. It was really just whatever I wanted to do, like make sure that that's what you want to do and if that's what you want to do, I'm going to push you to basically reach where you want to get to and, you know, the times that, you know, he pushed me or, you know, the times that you don't want to do something, but like I said, you got to do it anyway, that just kind of, that carries on in life. And the things that, you know, you get taught in terms of being a part of a team and because he taught me the game of football and everything, you know, around it. So everything in that aspect has kind of built into this point and, you know, shaped, shaped me and molded me into really what I am now. So, you know, he gets, you know, credit for all that. Yeah, That's I'm dope, big, dude. I'm a big fan of your dad. Yeah, your dad. every game. For some reason, my dad, my parents like to sit like at the top of the like the yeah, parent yeah, sections. Yeah. So every time I'm walking up to see them, your dad's always right there. I always yeah. dab him up, give him a hug, <laughs> talk to him for a couple minutes. Yeah, but I'm a big fan of your dad. I think I, I met him. You. I met him once or twice, and he's always just been super kind. Mm-hmm. Just a yeah. good dude, good yeah. folks. That's one thing people you know, they see him all big and stuff, or whatever. But you know, he, he probably he one of the nicest dudes out there. It's mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, it's just all love. Is you know, it's all just genuine love. Him and my dad be texting all the time too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now, like, thanks about you coming to the game this weekend. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, just randomly, yeah. 
that's one of the cool things honestly about doing this podcast is like i've gotten to know so many different like family like even just your dad like mm -hmm. after games like your dad would just out of nowhere like say hey to me that i'd go up and mm -hmm. say, talk to him and yeah, but even just football though like just not even myself just like my parents building connections and just i feel like coming to georgia it just like built like so many connections and not just any like just not just normal connections but like meaningful relationships that can you know go on far past georgia far past football and I feel like that was one of the biggest things that, you know, I've gained out of Georgia, just having, you know, brothers for life and things mm -hmm. like that, especially coming from across the country and, you know, just having to shift into a different way of doing things really. You know, I would say that's probably one of the biggest, like when I leave Georgia and I look back on everything, I would say that's probably one of the, the biggest benefits that, you know, leaving Georgia would give me. Dude, that's, I was talking to Seth Hour about it the other day at the beach. And we were just talking about like, Kirby's always talked about how, at least prior to us winning the national championship, mm -hmm. he was like, not only will the University of Georgia, University of Georgia set you up for life, but if you win that ring, exactly. then you're set for life. Exactly. And like, I didn't realize that until like after we won these two rings. Cause like, I, I'm obviously going to go play for a year or two at Mississippi state, but I've had like five companies reach out to me for journalism stuff and be like, Hey, you got a job whenever you exactly, want it. And it's yeah. like, it's absolutely insane. Oh yeah. My dad, by the way, is like one of your biggest fans. Oh, I know. Yeah. He, I, I love he'll, call, he'll call me. Like, ask me his normal questions, like, how are you doing? And I swear, like, majority of the time, there's a, how's Kendall doing? Is he healthy? <laughs> like, yes, sir, he's doing good. You know, I love Pops. After the games, it's always, you know, when they let the parents come down to the field, we go to the locker room and change and come back out. When I come out the locker room, he's always one of the first ones there. If I don't see my parents first, I'm going to see Papa Tate or Papa uh, Radledge right there. And he's always, he, he, he lets me know he loves me. And I say, love you too, Pop. And, you know, that's basically this situation turned a lot of situations in the family, you know, family situations where you check in on each other, make sure each other's good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, love, love Papa Radlish. The best, honestly, one of the best moments of the, of the Saturdays is like after the game, getting exactly. to walk out, you just showered, it's, you feel good. Exactly. Like you're it's talking like to the family. It's crazy how many people's parents I know. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm always like trying to get to the early bus and I never make it. Never, yeah. like, ever. I know you're everybody's parents. Crowd, you're like, hey, hey, and, hey, and it's crazy hey. sometimes because like, you know, you see the parents so much and everything that sometimes I'll forget who, like, who they the parents who. You know, I'll be yeah. like, whose mom was that? Who, whose pop was that? Just because, like, you get so, like, the relationship just between, like, the players and the parents, like, it becomes so big that, mm -hmm. you know, you don't even think about that stuff. Like, I know even um, Ryan Davis, you know, he's one of my one of my brothers. And, you know, it was one game that – it was after the game I was talking to his folks and, you know, I didn't even realize, you know, who it was, but it was already, like, love, you know what I'm saying, just from – past encounters and you know that's what it's all about to be honest you know who, that, that's someone you'd have on is ryan definitely oh, that would God. be classic definitely. if you put me and him together Trouble. addy would have like <laughs> i'm gonna text him addy right now would have the worst time of her life editing an episode of me and him we're on here together that'd be a no you should hear me rd and k milk we're on the same row in the locker the same row should we say it's a lot of stuff being stayed on that row who's on y'all's row um Ernest. like right by y'all yeah said Us three said Carson's on there, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, Warren, it's Warren changed was there out. Too, right? It's just changed out because you know people yeah. left and then recruits came in. And, then we got know. Jordan Hall, who's goofy. <laughs> he's he's like a, a, a I wouldn't say all the way full in there, but like a because you know JD's personality is just different. But yeah, he, he's he, got a JD type yeah, personality. Really? But, but he's not all the way there though. You know JD was different. Yeah, <laughs> JD. Then, then Lou will come on our row half oh. the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Lou's, Lou's a goofball. I'll say the man. locker room, just like right now, the locker room is a funny place. Like, in between workouts or whatever, you go in that locker room and it's, it's no telling what's going down in there. And that's why it's always oh, yeah. – Door you know, shut. And I yeah. feel like when I first exactly. got here – Exactly. Close the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, close the door. <laughs> I feel like when I first got here, it was like I'd, like, avoid conversations with people. Mm -hmm. And now there's, like, not a person on our team that, like, it's not like I don't want to, like, go, like, yeah, talk to yeah. them, if that makes sense. Or you, you just walk by and say something slick or just say something funny. And yeah. I think that's, too, like, just growing up. Like, I remember my freshman year, I didn't say a word in my locker room. I just went in there, got dressed, yeah. maybe talked to a couple of tight ends and walked out. Yeah. And now, like, last year, it was, like, I was saying something to Delp. I was saying something yeah. to, I mean, every Meeks, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Our locker room now kind of gives me, like, high school vibes. Yeah. yeah. Like, it just doesn't all smell Especially, bad. like, you, you go in there after practice, and it's, like, Everybody could be wrestling. Like, you know how it goes. Everybody yeah. could be wrestling or, like, any anything could really happen. Like, the other day, 
it was like offense versus defense, and you know, no, everybody no. for themselves. Yeah, you hear the, you hear the, the, oh shit! Everybody yeah. in the locker room sprints to uh, one in. I was getting, I was, cause trouble had, I had grabbed trouble. Uh -huh. and all of a sudden, I hear linebackers, linebackers. Them boys came around the corner and <laughs> they had me off, off, cause I had my shoulder pads still on. They grabbed me by my underarms and lifted me in the ground. I'm just feet dangling. That's hilarious, yeah, dude. But what day was it that we all went around ripping people's shirts off? I them? remember that. It was at the practice. You seen the uh, that little trend where it's like, hey, you need a napkin? They'd be like, yeah. And you walk by somebody's shirt. And you, yep, yep. And nobody was safe. We were wearing, really? those, red, we were wearing those red seven-on-seven seven <laughs> shirts. Oh, just those red and gray ones. And they're not, like, they're not, like, good. They're just thin great shirts. Material. They're yeah. just thin shirts. Yeah. I'm like, I don't think anybody in our locker room had one that wasn't ripped. Oh no, I, I took mine off to avoid it. Yeah, I, I took mine off. They wasn't they wasn't gonna get me. That's funny. I remember said said got low key mad when I got him. <laughs> said was walking down the road, and no, you know nobody was trying to do it to said, but I don't really care. Yeah. So I walked up behind said. I said, "Hey, I need a napkin." Grabbed his shirt, ripped it off. He turned around. He's like, "Come on, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro." <laughs> God, no, says awesome. says a good dude. I'm pretty sure he ended up going to get somebody. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna. Um, I got a random question. Yeah. So this is more for Tate and Kendall. So this last Saturday, Tate alluded, alluded to it. Why are you looking at me? You alluded to it a minute ago, talking about this last Saturday, the coaches clinic. What was that like? Because I was there. I've been mm -hmm. to a couple practices, regular ones, and then that was a shit yeah. show. Thursday was the worst. Yeah, I would Thursday say the worst. coaches clinic just because it's different. You know, usually <laughs> you're used to just everybody just going out there and everybody just you know really just being the guys in the facility, just be the only ones in there. But the coaches clinic, like the moment you walk in. It's at minimum. How many coaches? Like, yeah. I mean, it fills the entire yeah, it, facility. Like, when I tell you, like, on the practice field, the whole sideline is packed with coaches. Every every sideline, the end zones, they really can't even get off the sideline because everybody's so jam packed. And like, that that was just different for me because, like I said, you're so used to just being only the players, and if it's not mm -hmm. the players, then maybe it's a couple GMs or a couple, you know, uh, NFL scouts or something like that. But like you would look at the whole practice just packed with coaches. And it yeah. was like, even throughout the facility during that day, like you seeing so many new faces, different coaches like walking through. Walk yeah, because you don't, you know, it's, it's just different. Y'all were in our meeting room for meetings, weren't y'all? Yeah, yeah. So there's not that many seats. We were in the offense meeting, like where we do. Yeah, uh, the, uh, whatever what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. You know, one reel. One reel, yeah. But I'm like, Coach I was like, all right, we're meeting in here. I walk in, I'm not really paying attention. And I'm like, I like sit my notebook down. I like look up. I'm like, oh shit! I mean, every seat was packed. People like yeah. two deep standing down the walls. Exactly. I was like, what is going on Georgia here? And then football, the first, baby. and then the first play was me getting blown up on a counter, <laughs> oh. and all the coach was like, ooh, I was like, yeah, that's, him. <laughs> that's him right there. Oh, that's hilarious. And he's like, Coach Charles like points to laser. I mean, he's like. Here we got Tate Rattledge from Soft Ass Darlington, because <laughs> he went to Trine, which yeah. is like our Coach was our Rose rival. Is funny though, Coach Rose. Coach Rose is the man. Yeah, Coach Rose is the man. He's one of those coaches that you can just like joke around with, but like, of course, when it when it's supposed to get serious, it gets serious. Oh, but you should you should hear our offensive line room during meetings. Really? Like we lock in when we need to lock in, yeah. but <laughs> before then, there's no telling like what's going on. Exactly. That's awesome. All right, well, we're gonna transition into our second staple of the uh, show. Also, if you want to sponsor this segment of the show, hit us up. Uh, it is the Real Talk Blind Draft. We're going to do – okay, so I don't know if you follow golf at all, but the Masters is coming up next week. All right. Every year, the past champions – so Scotty Scheffler won last year. They have a champion's dinner. Okay. And so the first night of the week, they have a – or I don't know what night it is, but the – Last year's winner hosts a dinner for all the previous winners, and they get okay. to pick the menu. Yeah. So the way this is going to work is we're going to get three different menus all that right. past champions have given, and we have to rank them one, two, and three, somewhere in there. Without the, the next one. Yeah, the caveat is we get we only get one at a time, so we have to rank oh, so them you somewhere. Have to, you have to just guess where you're yeah. going to put it. All yep. Right. All right. Yeah, so we actually – I mean, we couldn't pick. There, there were some pretty good options, so we decided to go with four, four. instead of three. Okay. okay. So yeah, me and Patrick were doing a little homework back here. So to start it off, we're gonna do the 2022 Masters champ, Scotty Scheffler. Personally, one of my favorite. Who golfers. might win it again this year? He's on fire. Um, jeez. Anyways, that's besides the point. So Scheffler's meal that will be served this upcoming year is for the appetizer it was the fire it was firecracker shrimp and tortilla soup 
for the meal, it was a Texas ribeye and blackened fish. And then for dessert, it was warm chocolate, uh, warm chocolate skillet cookie with ice cream on top. What are the sides? There's got to be sides, right? Well, that was so the sides. sides okay. Keep don't make, the, don't this is make that ranking, face. Hold so on, you don't, don't know what's hold, coming next. Yeah, don't make that face. I mean, you're going to order the steak like if it was you, you'd be like blue rare. You know what blue rare for a steak is? Raw sizzle, sizzle, done. It's just like legally that? so they can like, kill like, the bacteria. The longer you cook a steak, the less flavor it has. He likes his steak. It like depends, this. though. I feel like that's disgusting. It depends on who's cooking it. If you cooking a steak, it might be that way. But if I'm cooking it, I'm gonna get that medium well. Yep. And I I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have it. A flavor is gonna marinate through. Dude, I'm not even gonna get myself in the argument because I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> we we went to Chuck's the other night. And the best like, I've had the best steak I've ever had in my life, and it was a fillet that was hey, medium well. Tate saw the burger I put on my story, and I tagged him in. Hey, not a crazy. Man, telling you, it All looked right, good. So, it looked the part. No, no, no. One, got, three, two. I got two. Yeah, I got two. You said three. Yes. One, three, two. Yep. All right, Patrick's coming with the next one here. Whenever you're ready. Right. The best part about this is like different winners are like international players, so like each food is different. That, yeah. that throws in a couple curveballs here. So Tiger Woods, favorite. Got to. 2019 Masters champ. Come on, Tiger. He had <laughs> Give us the fist a, pump. The Augusta roll, so it's sushi. I can go into it if you want, or if I can just leave it at that. That's straight. That's so fine. Sushi is an appetizer, starter. I like this already. Prime steak fajitas. Oh. Or you could do chicken if you're not a steak guy, but <laughs> prime steak fajitas as your main. That's kind of a, a wild card main. I'm a fan. For dessert, his options are flan or choc- uh, sorry, churros with chocolate sauce, which is another. It was some wild cards. I love time. this. I'm a big fan of that menu. I'm going to go ahead and put it at three. I'm going to put mine at that one at three, too. The churro does it for me. That I love churros. The I churro too. tanks it for me. <laughs> did you have those churros? <laughs> yeah, that I'm going to go four. I'm going to go four. Did you have the churros they had at uh, the facility the other day or like two weeks ago? Uh-uh. So it's, it's one through four, right? Yeah. I'm going to put that at four then because that didn't sound that good. Yeah, I'm going four. Yeah. I'm a big steak fajita fan. Okay, so, so we four, got four, three. Yeah. yeah. All right. Steak fajitas lost it for me. I'm saving the best for last. Got you one need to get two. Chad Lindbergh to make you steak fajitas. I need a text to make me. He makes homemade next, pico. Next one we got <laughs> Jordan Spieth, 2015 Masters Champ. It's a Texas boy. It's going to be good. This has got to be good. <laughs> get ready. So – the the starter is is a local green salad. It's not you know it's not hitting any it's not hitting hard you know. Um, next for the main we got Texas barbecue with brisket, chicken, and ribs. Oh. And then to finish we got a chocolate chip cookie with ice cream. Oh, that's that that so could warm, be one. And, and, it, and they mentioned it was warm chocolate chip cookie. That could be one for me. Interesting note that both the Texas boys are Scotty and Speed. Yeah. The same dessert. So yeah. Really I'm going one. I'm going two because I feel like you're about to hit us with an absolute curveball so I'm going to go three. I'm going to keep that one open. You're coming with like Hideki Matsuyama next or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I feel like he's going to come with something that's going to hit home. Yeah. Like. I'll, I'm going to stick with one, though. It's just like you can't go wrong with barbecue and chocolate chip cookies. So last, of course, you can't really, you don't really have an option of a, a ranking right, to go right in. Here. So I can mm-hmm. remind you of what you have left, but you don't have an option there. Yeah, what do we have open here you for each kind of go curveball here is the last one. Jeez. I think you guys are going to be happy about it. So it's Sergio. He has one. I have two, and you have four. four. So uh, Sergio, 2017 Master Champ. International salad. And I don't know what the heck. The, there was no description. International salad. So, so take far. that as however you want to take it. You can kind of. In your imagination, make up whatever you want. Spanish lobster and rice. Ooh, that yeah. sounds good. Yeah. It does sound refreshing. The lobster. No. And then Bobby is a big fan of dessert. Trace leche cake. Okay, I'm glad that, that I, I will go with my two. That, that is totally fine for my two. No, that's totally fine for my four, but that Trace leche cake. Yeah, that's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. This guy gets it right here. Trace leche cake. That's your Trace one, leche though. Leche I'm a big yeah, dessert that, guy, that's obviously. That's my one, but you got to think, like, the other ones, the, the, the barbecue – you know, I didn't have barbecue so much, you know what I mean? It's not my favorite here's the, no more. Here's the thing, though. So everyone's content with that being your number one? Yeah. Two I mean, for I me, say, four for him. What was, here's what here's was the, the thing, entree? though. The entree lobster and shrimp. Traditional Spanish lobster and rice. That's, That's either completely a hit or a That's what I'm I agree. saying. If they Mix. make it, I agree. If they make it could it be crazy, really good. Then that's going to be like top. That's going to be top it. But here's you know, the twist. You can, as a, as a previous champion, you can bring in the chef you want to make that. Oh, shit. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's going. All of them going to be oh, good regardless. I feel that like. barbecue. Who who's the barbecue? Spieth? Yep. Yeah, Spieth was barbecue. Uno. He's, from, he's from Texas. Number o uno. Yeah, he's bringing somebody from Texas to do barbecue. Yeah. Is, is Texas barbecue like? I, I mean, yes. I've had yes. Texas barbecue. Don't get me wrong. It's I've like been to that. Dallas. I've had Texas barbecue, but like, is it really that? Like, in my opinion, it's not like that much better than like. Listen, a, hold on, hold on. Had, I got I've an example. I got an example. When I was in, I was probably in middle school doing a little All Star game called the Brett Cooper All American Game. It was in Dallas, Texas. So you know, we went out there for Texas or whatever. In between no practices, me and my family, we went to this one. Like shack, hole in the wall spot, like side of the road. Mm. I think it was in like Lancaster, te- 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 Texas. I think it was Lancaster, Texas. Man, I went in there. I saw it was like it said big baked potato. Oh. So <laughs> I, I tell them I want the baked potato with everything on it. They they go out. They bring a baked potato. The baked potato is bigger than the plate itself. Like you can't even close the the thing. They put in like they not just put in little scoops like they oh, yeah. dumping it like that's brisket, awesome. that's great. the cheese, the like bacon, like everything, like everything they put it right on the potato, and then they pour. I think it was like some type of gravy or something like on top of it and everything. When I tell you that big, the baked potato is probably about like this big. It was gone within like fifteen minutes. Bro, that's like a white that trick. Was, that was my one Texas oh. barbecue experience, and that's that's got to put it on. That's top. a Two favorite trick. barbecue places: Dreamland. Where is that? Tuscaloosa. I'm going to go there next time I drive to Starkville. Great. Um, and then these dudes in Rome, Georgia. Parking lot of the Piggly Wiggly. Neither of these are in Texas. I know. I'm just saying. Oh. Goes. Rondas. Rondas. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, like, you can go out there. Nicest dudes ever go out there. And they're just selling oh, whatever you want. Yeah. They've got, they've got a legendary barbecue place in um, Valdosta. I forget what it's called. I know it's yes, one about, time. Yes, it's like a, it's like it's a massive restaurant. Yeah, it's a it's staple. Like, it's like world oh famous barbecue. Oh my! It's not Austin's, is it? Uh-uh. No, I forget where it is. But I stopped there recently because me and Dad went down to Sarasota for Brave Spring Training. On the way back up, we stopped there because he wanted to stop there, and I was like, "Oh, I just want to get home." Smoking pig. That's it. Boom! So good, <laughs> dude. He bought, so he bought like a bottle of saw. He was like, he was like, I gotta grab like a bunch of stuff because we ate there. He's like, this is was that good. actually it? Yeah, that's it, dude. Yeah. So we every crazy. time we go to Florida, we stop down by in Valdosta because that's where we always that's go eat there. My dad, like pretty much lives. So I'm gonna throw it back to Masters real quick. Honorable mention: Patrick Reed, polarizing guy. Either big boy. Not many people love him. Yep. But formerly at UGA, probably pretty good foodie Augusta from State. the way. He... Another Texas guy. He had a good menu. <laughs> I so mean, you got options either so. wedge salad or Caesar salad. Did he cheat I'm getting a, these I'm menus a big in? Wedge salad cheat. Guy. Bone in cowboy ribeye, oh. butter, oh. or you can do mountain trout. Ooh. Then he's he's the, coming in hot with the sides. You got um, corn creme brulee. Okay. Steam broccoli. Put it at one. Cream spinach. For real, like the, the bone in ribeye. With, you know where my mind the, goes. The bone in ribeye with the butter on top. Like that just that's my favorite steak right there. Uh, you, you know where my mind. On top? You know where my mind goes when I hear creme brulee. High School Musical. <laughs> it is my. That's my favorite dessert. Have you, you guys ever eaten at Marcel, the steakhouse in Atlanta? Uh-uh. They they make the best creme brulee I've For ever eaten. In my what is creme brulee? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I can't even think what it it's is. Like, I've had creme brulee. Actually. It's like it's like a type of it's like a pudding almost, but they like torch the top of it so it's like caramelized. Oh, like no. nah, is, is it the one where nah, like they come it. to the table and torch it? Or no, uh, no, that's like Sometimes baked Alaska. They like the top, but not very often. Okay, I'm good. thinking of something different probably. They like caramelize the top. It's so good. Anyways, yeah. I'm well, gonna I'm gonna kind of carry this. On. You want to say something? I was just gonna say, what would you guys? Think yes. One, one. I kind of want to. Oh, what would we rate? Rank that? No, no, no. What? No, that was just an honorable, honorable mention. mention. If you made, yeah. You win the match. So I what think. Are you on your menu? So uh, we get the choice though. Yeah. Like the the appetizer, appetizer, meal, sides, dessert. I got you. Let's go crazy. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you the guest. You got to. I know crazy. my entree. All right. Congrats. Dry go. aged prime rib. Oh. <laughs> All right. So the appetizer. <laughs> I'm gonna start with my appetizer. I'm gonna start with Philly cheesesteak egg rolls. Dude, the appetizer. Ooh. Pause. I went there's a, bur- there's a burger place across the place we live in in Starkville, mm-hmm. and we went there and like their like it was like feature on the menu was a Philly cheesesteak egg roll, or whatever. Yeah. And the guy, I was with a big old boy, and he was like, "We got to get like two orders yeah. of these," and they were unbelievable. Yeah. Philly cheesesteak egg rolls. Like, I didn't know it was a thing until then. Yeah, it's solidified. And then for my meal, I'm gonna go with. I say a seven or an eight ounce wagyu with truffle butter on top. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go that way with the sides, mac and cheese, and 
I'll go asparagus, throw some veggies in there. And then for the dessert, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with, Peach cobbler with ice cream on the side. This man Vanilla knows what he's cream. talking about. Come on, now. this man knows on, what he's talking about. Everybody, about to say you're speaking my language now. <laughs> asparagus. Um, for my meal, I'm gonna do a. I have to, I have to do my mom's chicken casserole. Mm-hmm. Like it is my it is my favorite entree of all time. Like the golden crackers on top with the butter. My sides. I'm gonna go with um, loaded baked potatoes mm-hmm. and. You threw a veggie in there. I don't want to throw a veggie in there just yet. I I don't think I, don't I just think think it can be safe. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I, I gotta go mac. I gotta go mac and cheese. Yeah. For dessert, I'm going monkey bread and sweet tea to drink. A sweet tea, sweet tea is a negative. For I got me. the desserts. What's I can't think of of what I want to do for dessert. Ooh, hold on. Let me run this back. With my dessert, I'm gonna give an option of peach cobbler. Or German chocolate cake. I love that. Nice. I love that. Oh, yeah. actually, how I got are you, you not fat, dude? <laughs> I got you. You know way too much about food. I love <laughs> it. You're one of those people. What? To walk down the fair, right? <laughs> You're one of those people that can eat whatever you want and I not eat, gain a pound. I right? eat crazy. I eat crazy, and my weight stays the exact same. I, See, I could walk past a burger and gain three pounds. <laughs> 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 um, man, I feel that one. Yeah, it's me hard too, to keep bro. the weight off, my guy. Entree? I mean, appetizer. Give me a blooming onion. Nice. From Outback. <laughs> That's a Ooh, big boy yeah. answer, too. And I love that. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe throw some kookaburra wings in there, too. The okay. wings. I was going to go jalapeno poppers, Sheesh. but we'll leave those out. Entree. Blue rib. Dry aged prime rib. Really? You can get it cooked to your liking. Have you ever had a dry aged prime rib? Uh uh-uh. oh. I've never had prime rib outside of pregame. Neither of You I. haven't had good prime rib. Where where's where's somewhere good around here? Uh, hard, it's hard to tell you. All right, when we actually go back to Rome, you gotta take me to. Uh, there's no good steakhouse in Atlanta. Yeah. We could go to Atlanta and get one. We'll so drive there like next weekend and we'll do um, it. Um, with asparagus and mashed potatoes. For real. And then dessert, we're going Mary Stewart Ratledge's Coca Cola cake. There it is. I knew that was coming. With vanilla ice cream. Why you ain't never brought me none? We're doing some. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting in on this. What okay. is? What is? I mean, it sounds pretty self-explanatory, but describe the Coca-Cola it's cake like, for me. I've and never the heard of it. It's, it's a chocolate cake. I don't really know what goes into it. I know there's Coke somewhere involved in it. It's chocolatey, and it is phenomenal. That sounds really good. I'll bring it. I'll tell her to make one and bring it. If she comes Saturday, I'll just tell her to bring one with her. We can, Dude, I'll bring it to the locker room. My mom has been talking about like your mom and, and her getting together and like bringing a dinner for us to have on set, like with like homemade stuff. Probably go crazy. I'll text my mom. To nah, wish. just let Dean make some pancakes. Sign us up. I'm Dude. ready for that. Yeah. When, sure we we got to make a trip to your house in my house. We Dean, have to, we have I'm to just going to tell – we're going to put a griddle right here and just make have a Dean griddle. make pancakes in front of us. <laughs> we could. Shout out Fire this, Flavor. This is crazy because uh, Dad came to practice and everybody walked up to him. He's like, you know how many mentions I've got about my pancakes that's up in here? <laughs> Here's the question, and we can get to you too. You guys can do like some menus too. So, like, are his pancakes – like, give me a comparison, like Cracker Barrel, J. Christopher, like... Not are, neither of them. Are they very buttermilky, or is it just kind of like... What's the texture of the pancakes? About that big, about that thick, and they're fluffy. What do they taste like, though? Is it like a buttermilk kind of vibe, or is it just plain cake? I'd put them closer to Cracker Barrel. Kind of like a toned-down Cracker Barrel flavor. Okay, good, because Cracker Barrel is kind of too much of a... Yeah. Sometimes. Have y'all ever had y'all pancakes where it's like... Almost like a little bit crispy, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh yeah. That's my favorite type. That's my favorite yeah. type. When it's like a little bit crispy, not too, you can't overdo it, but a little yep. bit crispy, that's the best way to do it. Like, it's all in the batter, dude. Like, uh, for real. You can't buy cheap batter. My mm-hmm. dad's pancakes are like, they're big enough to where I can only eat three without like only, laying only there. Three. I had three mini ones at Cracker Barrel on Sunday, and I was like falling asleep, <laughs> dying on the way home Sunday from Starkville. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, Bobby. And then Patrick. We doing master's menus? Yeah, give us your menu. Jeez. Uh, he wasn't thinking about it. No, I was not thinking about it. Patrick, go ahead. Patrick first. Right. Oh, I wasn't going to do this, I but I, something right. came to me that off my recent hunting trip. It wasn't something I got, but it came to me. So I'm going to start off with, I'm a big, I love a good wedge salad. You get some homemade either Respect ranch it. or blue cheese. You can choose what you want, but a wedge Pause. salad. Pause. We went to Chuck's the other night, and we got a wedge salad. I'm like, hey, can I get ranch? Uh, excuse me, sir. We don't have ranch here at the restaurant. I was like, "How are you serving salads and you don't have ranch?" Because I think wedge salads are typically it's, it's blue, blue cheese. cheese, but they had a house typically, salad too. Yeah. Like, okay, 
but I'm a big homemade blue cheese dressing guy. So wedge salad to start. I'm going to switch it up with the main and throw a curveball. I want some good elk back straps. Like Dude, that. so I heard, I really I've heard like a that. lot about elk lately. So elk, it's good. Like, like the animal? Yeah, the animal. It's elk, good. the back strap. Yeah. So it's like just a tender piece of meat that doesn't move an inch. Yeah. It melts it. It's like just the most so, tenderest so is filet. It, is it like Wagyu almost? Like in terms of yeah. texture? It's not going to have quite probably as much flavor because there's yeah. no fat in back it. It's very right. lean. Yeah. But it's just like the best tender filet that it's just yeah. going to – you put it on your tongue and it's just – dripping off the side it's just Sheesh. melting in your mouth so it's perfectly good. like medium rare something more through there that's probably overdone for you but some good back straps a nice side of either asparagus maybe wrapping bacon what's and up with the asparagus man asparagus, asparagus is asparagus. good yeah. season it and everything put it yeah. what? Man, a little, okay. little garlic a little salt and pepper the only downside oil. is makes your piss stink yeah it's like yeah, coffee okay. but i just started doing that like wrapped in bacon and throwing it on the grill uh -huh. i think it's a little, little char a little crispy uh -huh. man y'all are getting me hungry Hey, eight too. Hey, Should we go to trapeze? So I know. Have y'all ever like? Do y'all know how wagyu like becomes like oh, yeah. wagyu? Mm -hmm. So my my mama she actually put me on. So it's like you know like when they have like the, the 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 like the cow farms and everything. It's like the wagyu is basically like a cow that from the like moment the it's cow. born, not from the moment it's born, it's like inactive. Like mm -hmm. doesn't have any type of movement. Doesn't have any type of like the muscle growth. Doesn't. Camper. Yeah, like it's literally. It's eating real good. It's not moving, so all that meat is just marbleized, and it's just—it's it's literally. They feed them beer too. Yeah, oh, for real? Beer. Yeah. That They're, like it just re keeps them relaxed. Yeah. So it's yeah. Almost like yeah. just. It's tipsy. like yeah, and you think about it, it's like you got one miserable ass cow. But it that's just sitting there for life, just like not moving, just in the the smallest space that you could think of. But you put it on the plate, and that thing's magic. Tastes real good. <laughs> No, All right, no. Bobby, give it to us. Because I've seen videos of like those people like, hitting, like just massaging the cow like yeah. all day. And it's like, <laughs> what is going on? All right, so I think for my, oh man, Logan Crosby would love this one right here. I think I'm going to do the Southwestern egg rolls from Chili's. Wow, so all these egg rolls, dude. Egg well, rolls he, he brought up he brought the brought up the cheesesteak ones, and yeah. I was like, ooh, those Southwest egg rolls from Chili's. They, oh, there's something else. Mm -hmm. I love those things. Triple dipper. That's what I get every single time I go to Chili's. <laughs> um, and then, so for the entree, oh, man. It's so tough. Um, probably one of my favorite. It's, I don't know. You can take this in multiple different directions, but, like, some people may love it, some people may hate it. Uh, chicken Alfredo. I'll do any, like, like a nice, mm -hmm. it's got to be like handmade pasta. Exactly. Like, like all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like chicken Alfredo, great Alfredo sauce, you know, some nice grilled chicken on top. Hmm. Not, not, nothing, like a, nothing like an Olive Garden, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, it's got to be real. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's got to be real. And then, I like it. Yeah, for the dessert, special request. Since I won the Masters, I'm going to request that Sonic bring back their, uh, they had an Oreo uh, Big Scoop cookie dough blast. Yes. That they, have you had that? Yes. Literally, I, I literally tweeted at him. I was like, "Bring back the Oreo, bring back the blast, please." Yes. So is it a milk like a milkshake or what is it like? It's like a you ever have a, it, it's it's like thicker than that. It's, it's like, like one a, of those uh, that McDonald's had, like the little. Uh, it's like it. yeah, but it's like um, uh, Dairy Queen. It's, yeah, like, it's like you know how they're, it's really yeah, thick. Yeah, they're they're yeah, blizzard. Blizzard. It's like blizzard. Yeah, they're phenomenal. So it is. I mean, they it's had it, ice cream. like a McFlurry. That's yeah, interesting. it's a little bit thicker, I think. Okay. So it's like, dude unbelievable it is my it's like my favorite dessert of all time since i won the masters i will be requesting sonic to bring that back and they will I make love it that. for me <laughs> i, love I like it it's a bold yeah. choice all right yeah. k milk appreciate you brother thanks yeah, for being on uh, appreciate man. it for sure appreciate you best of luck this season